Yo, what is up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today's topic is don't force it, align and flow. This video is all about patience and understanding a few key elements when we are growing our vision, when we're creating what it is we desire. A lot of the times, at least in my life, and if you're watching this, it probably resonates with you as well, I've been impatient for things to happen. I have expectations about how the outcome should be. I want it to happen now. And for me personally, it was because, and probably the same thing for you, you really tried to push things in retrospect now, right? We don't really realize when we're doing it, but in retrospect, you realize you were trying to force things. You were trying to push the agenda, make it happen, grind all day, hustle all night, like that whole mentality of like, we gotta crush it, we gotta go. So we try to force things, but what I've learned, at least in my experience, is that's not how things work. And we want to do things and make them happen as quickly as possible, especially in today's world of instant gratification and ubiquitous social media where we get the dopamine flick and we get everything right now. Uh, when we want it on demand, Uber Eats, give me that food, do it, right? We're used to getting everything right now, but that's really not how things work, especially the grander your vision, the more time it needs to put in deep roots so that foundation can grow. So we get impatient, but it's because also you know how capable you are, you know that you have what it takes and the skills to build what you want to build, so you're like, why can't it happen right now? I'm ready, let's do this. So from my experience, again, I've tried to force things because I'm like, I know I can make this happen. Let, let's do this. I, what else do I got to do? What buttons do I got to press? Who do I got to talk to? What are we going to do? How many you know people do I need to uh, connect with and all these things? But all I was doing was stunting my own growth, stunting my own vision. And actually, I was the one in the way creating resistance and not allowing the universe, which is way more powerful than me and, and you both to just sit back and do its thing. So today we're going to talk about not forcing things and what it means to get into alignment and just allow the flow of your life to happen. I had a good amount of notes and downloads start to come for this one. So we'll start with that. We can't force things. There's a natural order to things. There's a natural flow to things. There's a natural growth period and it all takes timing. The first example I'll give you that I thought of was if you think about a farmer or anybody, right? Maybe you do a little gardening on the side. When you initially planted some seeds in your garden, maybe you're trying to grow like, you know, strawberries or cucumbers, tomatoes, whatever it is, you planted those seeds. No matter how hard you try to force those seeds to grow because you want those tomatoes tomorrow, they're not going to grow tomorrow. There's a natural timing to the way that they need to grow. You nurture them, you plant the seeds, you nurture them, you till the soil, you create a good environment, you water the plants regularly when they're supposed to be watered, but you just gotta sit back and chill and let the tomatoes do their thing, man. And then the, as long as you're taking care of it, you're watering the plant, you're making sure little insects or whatever aren't coming and eating the plant, you're nurturing it, you're taking care of it, it'll do its thing. But the one thing you can't do is force it. You can't say, tomorrow I'm having friends over, I'm trying to make a caprese salad and I want some of my garden tomatoes grow tomorrow. It doesn't help them like that. It doesn't happen like that. We can't force force things no matter what. So we prepare the environment, we till the soil, we nurture that plant, we nurture our vision, our dreams, right? We do the things we need to do. We water the plant, we give it sunlight, make sure it has good fresh air, everything's in good condition. But then we just gotta chill. We gotta sit back and be patient and sure, your friends are coming over tomorrow. They're not gonna get some of your homegrown tomatoes, but, and I don't know how long it takes tomatoes to grow, but whatever, in a couple of months, a couple of weeks, a couple of months, probably a couple of months, I don't know. They will grow. You can have your friends back over and they'll have some bomb tomatoes to have in their salad. So there's a natural order and timing to things. We cannot force it no matter how much we want. This is something I'm experiencing deeply in my life. The universe, my biggest lesson right now is patience. I know where I'm heading and I know what I want in my heart and I know it's all happening, but I can't force it. I can't force any of this stuff. You cannot force it. And also what happens, I made a video a couple of days ago, whatever it was now, they're all starting to blend together about burnout. 
And when you try to force things, this is where burnout comes from. You're trying so hard, you're trying, you're pushing, you're pushing, when in reality, if you're getting to that point of, of burnout, it's probably a signal that you're actually trying to force things and you need to chill out, you need to relax. You know, uh, guys and ladies, we can both relate to this. I mean, I know I've done it. You've been on a date, right? And ladies, you, you know this better than most men because most men, you know, I'm guilty too. I'm not like some, you know, master of, you know, relationships and dating and all that. But, you know, you're attracted to this guy, but he's just like super pushy and he's trying to force it on you. And he's like, you know, you look great. And he's like, God, he's like, oh man, let me kiss you. And you're just like, hey, get the hell away from me. You can't be forcing things. Fellas, we've all been guilty of this. Like, trying to make the move too quickly. We got to back up, relax. There's a natural timing to things. We need to let things happen organically. We need to create the right environment and do the things we need to do. But in the end, we got to chill out, just relax and let things happen organically. Those tomatoes are not going to grow tomorrow. And it's difficult. And this is where patience comes in. So planting the seed is your vision. You have a vision in your mind of what you want to create. So we plant the seed. You put it in a good place, you make sure it's in a good environment, that it's in a nice area where it's gonna get plenty of sunlight, the soil's all nice. This is the environment that you create your vision in, right? Surrounding yourself with the right people, around the right energies, putting yourself in a good position for that vision to grow. And then you nurture it, you water it every day or every other day or whenever, you know, this is the actions you need to do. You need to uh, make sure that you're whatever posting content every day or every day you are reaching out for new leads for your business to create sales opportunities, whatever the case is, you got to do the things you got to water it, you got to nurture it. But then there's a portion to it where, okay, I've done what I need to do, man. You just got to relax. You got to let it, let it happen. There's a divine timing to all of this, especially you watching this you're watching this video and it's resonating with you and maybe some of my other videos and content because you're a light worker, you're a star seed, it's divine timing. There's a divine timing to happen that happens when you're ready, when the when you've passed the universe's tests, you've learned the lessons you need to learn and now the universe goes, oh, he's ready, oh, she's ready. Then things will start moving and you don't, gotta, you don't have to do anything but you'll know because all of a sudden you'll get that big break, you'll get that, get that big contract, you'll get that big sales, you'll, uh, you'll meet this right person, the right connection, and then all of a sudden things start rolling and every day, every week, things are moving rapidly. You've learned the lessons, you've been patient and waited for the roots to grow, and now boom, things are exploding. Uh, another example I'll give you is a bamboo tree. I, used to always, I, I learned this actually in a, one of the sales jobs I have, but do you know how a bamboo tree grows? Have you ever heard this before? A bamboo tree takes, I'll give you, there's a, there's a better, there's a story about it. So this guy is neighbors with this old man and this old man walks out every day and it's just a pile of dirt and the old man just comes out, waters the pile of dirt and the neighbor walks out, he sees him doing, he's like, okay, whatever, you know, his neighbor's doing his thing, whatever, comes out next week, every day, he sees this guy watering a dirt dirt there's nothing there it's just a pile of dirt after a couple of months he goes what are you doing or like a, a like a year or so watching him do this he goes what are you doing man you just come out here you're watering this pile of dirt clearly nothing is growing and the old man looks at me goes just be patient watch what happens just be patient so he just continues to watch his neighbor five years down the line all of a sudden the neighbor walks out looks at the man's pile of dirt sees a sprout a week later Two weeks later, he looks out and all of a sudden, there's these huge plants that have grown 10 feet, 20 feet, 30 feet within a matter of a month. And I apologize for you horticulturists out there and agriculturists who know the timing better of some of these plants than I do, because I'm butchering them. Enlighten me, please, in the comments. The plant that he had planted was a bamboo tree. A bamboo tree will not grow for five years because what's it doing? It's planting its roots so deep in the soil over those five years, but within like a few months, it shoots up to like 40 feet or like has this explosive grow period. That may be your vision right now. You may do be doing all the things that you need to do, but nothing is happening. This is when you get to practice patience, have trust in the divine timing of the universe, have faith in yourself, be 
operating and moving in faith and silence, knowing that you're doing the things and that this vision will manifest. If you're doing it for the right reasons and it's coming from your heart and it's in alignment with you, it will happen. The grander the vision, the stronger the roots it needs, the longer time it needs to germinate to create a foundation. If you think about how skyscrapers are built, what's the most important part of any building? It's the foundation. The foundation takes time. You can only grow as high as the foundation is strong. So we've got to be patient and let go and understand the d divine timing of this. Now, there's a difficulty with this. If you've been burnt a lot in the past, you have a lot of trust issues with people, with relationships, if nothing has ever worked out for you in the past and every goal you've tried to do hasn't worked out in sabotage, you may have this belief that it's not gonna work out subconsciously or consciously say, oh, it's just not gonna work out. So this is where you've got some healing work to do about past hurts from relationships, uh, your subconscious belief patterns about what is possible, what you're doing, because if you have trust issues, that's gonna be, it could be really challenging for you to just operate in faith and sit back and relax. The more you've been burned, the more things haven't worked out for you, the harder it's gonna be to be patient. This is my situation. And the universe tell me right now, I've been talking with my dad a lot about this stuff. And that's a whole nother story about my dad. We'll talk about family karma and healing all that when the time is right. I was like, damn man, I just need to sit back and chill. I know what I'm doing. I know what I want to do. It's like crystal clear. I'm like already living it. I can feel it. But it takes time to manifest on the 3D realm. And I have a note about that. We'll talk about it in a second. So you've got to do some healing work if you've got issues with trust, uh, with people, or things haven't worked out for professional reasons in the past. Because you've got some some clutter there, some stuff that, that's resistant, that's not allowing you to believe that this can happen for you in the way that you want it to. And it might not happen in the way that you want it to. In uh, Deepak Chopra's book, uh, The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success, recommend reading that. Um, there's a lot of things. There's also these laws, the seven spiritual laws of success are also called the natural laws. These are natural laws, as natural as gravity. When you drop a pen, it's going to hit the ground. Everything moves. It's gravity. This is a natural law. Uh, I believe it's the fourth law that I wanted to share with you that came up. The law of least effort. Nature's intelligence functions with effortless ease. With care, or with carelessness, harmony, and love. This is the principle of do less, accomplish more. And you've heard that. Now, what does that mean? You do less, you accomplish more. I don't get it. What do you mean? I gotta grind all day, grind all night, operate all three hours of sleep for six years, and then it'll happen. Nah, man, that's the 3D. That's the old Newtonian way, according to uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza. You're watching this because you're on an elevated vibration. You're shifting from the 3D to the 5D consciousness. Now We're now creating from the quantum level, which is an energetic level. You do less, you accomplish more because when you're in alignment, the universe is naturally working in your favor. You're consciously co-creating with the universe. Your vision will happen. The law of least effort is what you need to ground into. You have to trust that the natural laws, everything that you look around right now, wherever you're at, you got plants around you. I'm outside of the gym parking lot right now. We got plants, we got trees. Look outside your window. You know, these plants don't got to do anything. They will naturally grow. They're, they're going to find their way, whatever's easiest for them. This is how we got to learn to operate to the law of least effort, natural law, allow things to happen for us. Do less, accomplish more. Now, to be clear, this doesn't mean that you do nothing. You don't sit in a room and meditate and visualize and just say, oh, it's gonna come to me and all of a sudden, oh my God, I'm gonna get a lottery uh, ticket on my doorstep in the mail for a million dollars. That's not how it works. I'm not saying don't do nothing. Don't, please do not take this out of contents. And I bring that up because that used to be me. <laughs> I used to be the guy. Oh uh, man, sitting in the vision board and meditate. I'm like, why is nothing happening? I don't understand. Nothing's going on. It's like, because I wasn't doing anything. I wasn't doing the things. And what I have learned is this, the meditation, the visualization, it's very important because you've got to crystallize that vision in your mind and in your heart and connect with it and connect with the feeling of what that vision is going to bring you. And the final step of manifestation is take the action. We're still living in a 3D material world and so the action, the physical action, creates the physical manifestation of that which you desire, your vision. So yes, you meditate, you visualize, you get in alignment, you get clear on what you want, but you still have to take the actions for the physical manifestation to come into play. Sounds ridiculous as I'm saying this right now, but I swear to God, that was me, man. I would sit there and meditate, 
visualize, do the vision board, the affirmations, and uh, like, why is nothing happening? Because I wasn't doing anything. So you still have to do what you have to do. But there's that balance between burning out, grind all day, hustle all night, I gotta make this happen. Nope, that's gonna lead you to burnout. I sit back and I meditate and I visualize and let things come to me. Nope, that's not gonna happen either. You got to bridge the gap. Be clear on what you want and align it, feel, line, feel in your heart what it's gonna feel like. Know crystal clear what you want. And you still gotta do the actions, the days. You gotta post content. You gotta get out there and make your sales calls. Uh, you gotta get out there and go to networking events. You have to uh, garner relationships for clients for your uh, new hairdresser business or whatever it is, right? You get what I'm saying. You still have to do the physical actions. Cool quote that uh, when I was looking up the spiritual laws of success that were popping in my mind is from uh, Lao Tzu, the author of uh, the, Art, the Art of War, the famous book. Um, An integral being knows without going, sees without looking, and accomplishes without doing. An integral being knows without going, sees without looking, and accomplishes without doing. That's about operating on faith. That's about trusting in the divine. That's about allowing the law of least effort and natural law to grow those tomato plants for you, okay? The next natural law that popped up, and this one's very important, and this is also a practice for me right now and also why I'm speaking to you about it. I need this reminder myself, the law of detachment. I think it's like the seventh law or whatever. I think the order, at least in this context, is irrelevant. You can, again, go look that book up. The law of detachment. The way to acquire anything in the universe is to relinquish our attachment to it. So let's clarify this. This does not mean you let go of your desire and let go of the vision. Absolutely not. As a matter of fact, you keep that vision you keep that desire at the forefront of your mind and in your heart. What the law of detachment is, you detach from the outcome of how it might look. So it might not turn out the way that you originally have in your mind and plan. That's why you hold on to the feeling of what it's gonna feel like when you have that vision manifested and you're doing what you wanna do. You're living where you wanna live. You're in the relationship of where you wanna live you relinquish the outcome. Because in reality is, if we attach to what it's gonna look like, you're stunting the magic of the universe. You're, you're stunting yourself. Because it can turn out new and better and way grander than you ever imagined. But if you're attached to the outcome, you're gonna block it and it's probably gonna take even longer. Again, creating the resistance. Relinquish the re, re, uh, resistance. Allow yourself to let go. Trust in the law of least effort. Detach from the outcome. Here's what I've learned about this whole situation about manifesting what it is that I desire. This is going to probably look different than you originally planned. And most importantly, also with the law of detachment that I forgot to mention here, very important part of it, is you have to let go and detach from how it's going to happen. You have no idea how it's going to happen. You have to create the crystallized, clear vision and desire, the end goal, and attach to the, or, uh, ground into the feeling of it, but you have to completely detach of how it's going to look, because here's why. If you think it's gonna be like, I'm gonna meet this person and then I'm gonna do this and then it's gonna look like that and then I'm gonna make this much money and I'm gonna get this type of sales, a contract from this company. Again, you're creating from the known what you think it should look like, but the reality is you're creating something new and different that you've never created for that you desire. If you create something new and different that you've never desired, it's probably gonna look way different than anything you've ever experienced or desired because this is something different. It has to be something new. When it's new and different and you're open to it looking new and different, the how, trusting in the law of least effort that the how is going to look different that it's probably going to be easier than you originally thought because you're trusting in these natural laws it's going to look different it's going to feel different you have no idea this is what miracles are about you have to be open to the different ways it's going to happen you thought it was going to look this way it actually happened this way which was easier it came to you you didn't have to do a lot and it turned out way better than you ever thought law of least effort, law of detachment onto the how, the outcome. You may also think it's gonna look like this. Dude, it could turn out 100 times bigger and better than you thought. And it can happen a hell of a lot easier than you think it is. This is creating from the quantum. This is where you're at. 
we're on a vibrational level, we're on frequency, you're on energy, you're on divine timing. That's why you're watching this video. I'm right here with you. We doing it. It's happening. Yay. But we got to practice these things. Detach from the how, detach from the outcome, yet hold the desire and the vision in your mind by holding on to the feeling of what it's going to be like when you're finally at that destination. How do we know we're aligned with our vision? How do I know I'm in alignment, Pierce? How do I know that I'm aligned though? Like, how do I know that I'm doing the right things? Couple signs. And I'm not even gonna look at the notes, but the first thing that comes up, you're gonna be uncomfortable. You're going to be uncomfortable, probably very uncomfortable. You're going to be uncomfortable because you're gonna be put in situations that you've never been put in. They're not familiar to you. Now, why is that? Again, it's gonna look new and different. You're uncomfortable because it's unfamiliar. You've never done it like this before. You're experiencing something new. You're growing, you're expanding. You're being molded by the universe into the person you need to be in order to manifest that vision, even probably on a grander scale than you originally envisioned. You've got to trust in the divine timing and detach the law of least effort. Just let it happen, man. Let it happen organically, sis. Let it happen organically, just let it be. It's going to be uncomfortable, that's number one, because it's gonna look different. It's uncomfortable, this is unfamiliar, I've never done it like this before. I would have never thought of this, I would have never done it like this. Yeah, I know, that's how you know you're on the right track, because you're in the flow of creation now, something new and different. The universe is showing you something different. It's putting you out of your comfort zone because it wants you to grow and have this new experience because that experience is gonna mold you into who you need and want to be in order to live that life. It's gonna be uncomfortable, sign one. That's how you know you're in alignment. Two, synchronicities. I've gotten so many comments, and again, man, I'm not gonna get emotional. Thank you so much for the love and support. Uh, with all of the content I've been releasing, my intentions really are pure, man. I mean, I've said it on these videos, like, I was the, man, okay, I don't wanna get all crazy and off subject, but thank you so much for the support. I really appreciate you guys. I really do. Um, synchronicities. See what I'm saying? I don't want to get all in that train of thought. Um, <laughs> we got to stay focused here. Let's deliver a message. Uh, this is being in service. Synchronicities. Divine timing. This is how you will also know that you're in alignment. Now, what are synchronicities? Oh, that's what I was going to say. With the comments coming up in my videos, I've had so, so many come up in these videos and they go, man, it's crazy, you know, that you, you came onto my feed randomly and this couldn't have come at a better time. Oh man, that's crazy, I didn't, you know what I mean? This is a your small channel, you came or whatever, I didn't even search for it, it just came to me. This couldn't have come at a better time. That's a synchronicity. You're watching this right now because it's divine timing. You're in alignment. So these things, these people, these places, the opportunities, the ideas, Listen for those ideas. Those are the things you should be doing. That's your soul speaking to you. That's the universe guiding you. The synchronicities will start to happen. Repeating numbers, 333, 111, 222, 121212. Watch for the repeating numbers. And uh, there is a, you know, man, once I got, get my studio and stuff, I'll be able to sit down and link all this stuff for you. If you are in, If you're getting a lot of repeating numbers, these are, we live in the matrix, this is a binary code, 10011000. So if you're seeing synchronicities with the numbers, repeating numbers, these are angel numbers, it means you're in alignment, the matrix is speaking to you, your higher self, your guides are speaking to you through the numbers. So look these numbers up. Type in on Google, Joanne Sacred Scribes. That was the website that was given to me by my mentor and that's the one I followed. It will give you the divine meaning of each individual numbers up to like, I don't know, 999, like 900, 9,999. Anyways, Joanne Sacred Scribes, just Google it. And uh, if you're getting a lot of synchronicities with numbers, angel numbers, look those up. That should give you some guidance also on the synchronicity. So numbers, chance interactions, you're gonna be uncomfortable, you're in alignment. Here's like an example. Okay, how do I know when I'm in alignment? you're sitting here figuring out, trying to learn what the next step is. You talk, catch up with a friend you haven't caught up with in a while and they tell you about this book and they're like, oh, I've been reading this book, it's been crazy. And you're like, oh, that's cool. That sounds like a cool book. The next day you are listening to uh, some other person on YouTube and that book comes up and you're like, that's crazy. I was just talking to my friend yesterday and the second book came up. Okay, 
cool. Then you're like, I don't know, listening to a podcast or you're like, you're in a coffee shop and you randomly hear, randomly hear this person talking to her friend about this book or you walk by and that person's reading that book, some stranger and it's sitting on the side of the table and you go, what the? Synchronicity, you're aligned. That's how you know. You've been sitting here thinking, man, I really need to hire someone to help me with this. I need to hire like a graphic artist. I don't know how the hell to do my logo. Next thing you know, you're at like your kid's soccer game or at the dog park and you meet someone who's a graphic designer who's super cool and you guys connect and really vibe. Synchronicities, these are not chances. So when you're not forcing it and you're aligned, allow things to flow. Those are examples of how you'll know you're in alignment. Man, these videos are getting longer and longer. I don't know if if I should be keeping them short or what. I, I just gotta gotta let them go and trust myself because this is what comes up when I'm writing um, about how I want to, what I want to share with you guys about what spirit's communicating with me. So I guess I, guess I just gotta trust it and let it go. There you go, see what I mean? I gotta just trust it that this is, this is all good. That the video will be however long it needs to be. It don't matter, the right parts for the right people will come. Trust, let go, detach, see? And, and that's one thing, man. I am not, I'm just, I'm just a regular guy. I'm a regular person like you. The only difference is I, and it's not even a difference. I'm on the same path as you. I'm doing the work just like you do. The only difference is I know that this is my passion and purpose to speak to write, to share these things. So that's all that it is, man. I'm the same freaking whatever, regular guy. Anyways. So what do we do while our vision is growing? What do we do? And like, you know, if, if you're sitting here and you've you know done what you need to do or like you're like waiting for these things to happen, what do we do? You do what you need to do first of all. You, you make those phone calls, you go to the networking events, you post content, you create the resources for your business, you create the products for your business, you do what you need to do. Once that, you learn, you research, you make sure that you're taking care of your body, that you are eating the right food, that you've got physical exercise and that you're grounded. Be in your body, take care of your physical body. You meditate, you learn, you research, and you detach, you go and have fun. Don't kill yourself doing this shit, do not, ish. Sorry, I gotta make sure I don't cuss, cause you know, I want, anyways, whatever. You go have fun and you let go because you trust. You trust in the divine that your vision is growing you trust in the divine that the law of least effort and your detachment on how it looks is happening, trust, let go, you just go chill. You know the universe is taking care of it. Just It's just a reminder that the, the density of the 3D world that we're in, the, the en heavy energy of planet Earth, even though it's already manifested, it's already happened in another dimension, in order for it to manifest and for you to align for it in this reality, it's still, the physical manifestation does take time because we're in a dense 3D environment. So you just go, you do the things you need to do and then you just chill out knowing that they're gonna happen, knowing it's gonna happen. Now, uh, one of the people who, that's so interesting, huh? I'm get, getting some other down this. Um, so for uh, one of the other people I wanna share with you, Abraham Hicks, if you have heard of her, it's basically this woman who channels a group of spirits named Abraham. She's all over the internet, they've written forever written tons of books, but they talk about the art of allowing and that it is an art. It's about releasing any resistance, any doubts or fears that think that it can't happen in an easy and much grander way. It's an art form. The art of allowing, relax, allow it to happen, be open to something new and different because again, it might happen much differently than you originally anticipated. Now, the quote that I looked at today it's by this one named Judith Orloff. I don't really know who that is. I'm gonna have to look her up now, but I liked the quote when I was looking on the internet. Trying to force things only disturbs your goals. Forcing will not help. Everything happens in its right time. Divine timing. The last analogy that came or example that uh, I thought about too, you're baking a cake. Your vision is like baking a cake. You're manifesting this beautiful cake. What happens when you get all the ingredients? First, you gotta get all the ingredients. You gotta mix them together and do the right steps. You gotta do the things. And then you put it in the oven. You gotta let it bake. Now, what happens when you take the cake out too soon? Probably had undercooked cake. I'm sure we all have. It's nasty. It's gooey. Or some some people might like that. Like the under, under slightly undercooked cookies where they're a little gooey and stuff. That's nothing wrong with that. Anyways, when you take the cake out way too early, it's too soft. No one enjoys it. 
what happens when that cake is in there too long it's like a burnt crisp and some people like that too that's okay you get my point i'm not talking about cakes here we're talking about the timing when you take that perfectly baked cake out put the icing on it you know whatever toppings is delicious you're baking a cake so there's a timing to this how do you know you just focus on your alignment how do you know you're in alignment synchronicities are happening you're uncomfortable and you also feel in your heart that there's this flow you just know it's an instinctive feeling that's part of this journey for you as well and we'll do a video on that your intuition your sensitivity is heightening more than ever you may not be able to be around the same people you used to be around you may not be able to eat the same foods you're hypersensitive to a lot of different things now your psychic awareness your clairvoyance, your claircognizance, I think it's clairgustance or whatever, the, the smelling psychic sense. Your psychic senses, your intuition is heightened. Your vibration is raising, that's why. So you're becoming more aware, your consciousness is expanding, that's what's happening. So you're baking a cake. Last thing we'll do, of course, is pull the uh, oracle card of the deck. So also, this is one thing I wanna speak about. Some people, you know, they feel uncomfortable with um, just because of the name of the deck. The name of the deck is the Archangel Power Tarot Card Deck. Even though it's branded as a tarot card deck, this is an Oracle card deck. What's the difference? When I worked with my spiritual mentor, she's the one that turned me on to Oracle cards, not tarot cards. She told me actually specifically not to do tarot for some other different reasons. And so I wanna talk to you about that before we do this to bring some awareness to that for you. When it comes to tarot cards or Oracle cards, they're very different. The Rider Weight Tarot deck is like the OG, you know, uh, the Tower card, the Death card, the Hierophant, the Ten of Wands, the Ten of Cups, the Four of Swords, all that stuff. That's the Rider Weight Tarot deck. That's like the most OG, um, you know, tarot deck. And I don't have anything wrong with it. Uh, but what happens is when people hear tarot, to them, it conjures up witchcraft, occultish, uh, paganism, Satanism, all these dark energies. Because in the collective consciousness, tarot cards have a negative connotation to them associated with witchcraft, the occult, sacrifices, all that stuff. So if that's you, understand that there's a distinction between oracle cards and tarot decks. And that would be something for you to reflect on. You may have had a past life where, you know, you were like one of those people in a village watching witches being burned at the stake. And so you have this bad association with the occult with uh, you know, the, with Satanism and paganism and stuff. And, and I'm, to be clear, don't take any of this out of context. I'm not like sitting here supporting. I'm drawing a distinction between what an Oracle deck is and a tarot card deck. Cause it's funny, I watched some tarot card channels about uh, astrological readings about like Gemini and stuff cause I'm a Gemini. And some of them resonate with me and some of them don't. And if it doesn't, just like this video, turn it off, man. That This message ain't for me. His, the guy that, that this guy's speaking to, that's not for me, but she is because I resonate with her messages. You take what resonates with you. We'll do a video on that too, about alignment res resonating. So there's a difference between tarot and oracle. If you, you're turned off by the oracle cards or the tarot dark, the tarot decks, that's fine, that's all good. Um, and crystal energy, when I speak about that, you, that may not, you may not vibrate with that. You take what resonates with you and you leave the rest, okay? Some of this may be for you, some of it may not, and that's okay, you know? Doesn't mean it's wrong, just because this person likes this, and the other person likes that, right? We don't make people wrong for their own personal preferences. We, we sit there with understanding and compassion, understanding that we each have a different, we're going to the same place, but we each have a different way to get there. So we respect other people's beliefs, what they choose to do, because that is their path, that is their karma, that's their dharma. You focus on what resonates for you and you leave the rest. So anyways, wanted to say that, uh, I thought that was very important to say today, because um, I know the tarot cards are like, oh God, he's pulling a tarot card, oh, this guy's a, this guy's a, a warlock or you know whatever I don't know whatever crazy stuff people end up saying on the internet <laughs> that'll be another conversation too when I start getting all kinds of crazy energies coming at me but anyways we're gonna pull this card we tap three times to clear the energy ask for the purest the most divine truth in your highest good and the highest good of the collective inhale take a deep breath open up today's message about alignment we ain't forcing nothing Almost there. Woo. I always get chills, man. Okay, we pulled two of them, but this is the one that's standing out, so we're going to do this one. Today we've got the Ten of Michael. If you're new to the channel, I always say you look at the card first and the image. 
look at the image first. Notice anything that's standing out to you. Any of the pictures, any of the colors, is it the, is it the stage itself? Is it you being on stage? Is it the dancer? Is it her body that you wanna work and focus on your fitness? Is it that you felt the need to go dance and you go dance? Is it the swans in the background, the angel wings? Pay attention to what resonates for you, that little tree in the background. Understand that whatever images are coming up or popping out to you individually or colors, that is a message for you to reflect on. The message for today on this card, a situation has ended and you are finally free. New opportunities for happiness will now follow. Put the past behind you. Put the past behind you. So what comes up for me as it pertains to today's message is about alignment and flow. Man, you've got so many doors opening up for you. You've got so many doors opening up for you. And these are opportunities for what you want. You have to be willing to let go of the past, put the past behind you. You have to be willing to let go of the past the old relationships, they may be close friends, they may be uh, family members. Again, doesn't mean you cut people off cold turkey, if, you know, unless you need to, whatever. Don't take things out of context. Let the past go. You let maybe past situations, old jobs, old relationships, old ways of doing things, old habits. You don't need to smoke weed anymore. You don't need to smoke cigarettes anymore. You don't need to sit here in uh, whatever bad habits or whatever. There's a new way of doing things. You put that past behind you. There's new opportunities that will follow as you change. So we'll do the extended reading and call it for today. Ten of Michael, where you at? It's finally over. The situation has ended and you are finally free. You probably saw this time coming and have been welcoming it. New opportunities for happiness will now follow. It's possible that you'll have a sense of sadness, but this card more often brings with it a great sense of relief. If you've been struggling, the worst is over now. Let go of what you've been holding on to. Have faith that your angels will walk with you into the beauty of a brand new dawn. You're about to start a new life. Bro, sis, we on our way. Additional meanings of the card. Pushing too hard. I don't make this stuff up, guys. Additional meanings of the card. Pushing too hard, putting the past behind you, freeing oneself of a dependency. Pushing too hard talking about not forcing things it's in the title today so don't force things relax chill take a deep breath if you've been grinding take a couple days off come back to it later you may get some new insights love you guys see you next time i appreciate you so much it's all peace and love for me yep that's it we'll see you tomorrow later peace